Hi guys, my name is Miri and today I'm going to talk to you about the Rancho Levels of Cognitive Functioning. Now this is uh, for OTs and future OTs who are diligently studying for their NBCOT exam. And if you're here, it's probably because you are trying to either learn the material, having difficulty memorizing this stuff, or you find this simply overwhelming and daunting as I did. So the purpose of this video is not to necessarily go over every single bullet line item because you can do that using your Pedretti Occupational Therapy textbook as I will be referencing today, but to give you some study strategies that I thought was helpful in helping to understand each level broadly. So first, what I'm going to do is go over the categories that I love these levels in, and then after that, I'll break down each level with a little bit more detail. All right, so the first category, levels one through three. I like to lump these categories together because the common theme here is that the patients require total assistance. So when you're thinking uh, of a patient that requires total assistance, what comes to mind? You may see a patient in bed with very little motor movement, if at all, significantly delayed response to any commands or stimulus, um, if at all. And so so levels one through three requires total assist. Now the next category, levels four, five, and six, the common theme here is that the patient is confused. Okay, so at these levels, what might you expect? Learning? Probably not. And if so, with lots of assistance. Uh, will they have purposeful or goal-directed behavior? No, their attention will be pretty divided, fleeting, and nonspecific. All right, so uh, that's what you have for levels four, five, and six, common theme, confused. Levels seven and eight, uh, they're pretty high functioning. They're either at automatic or purposeful level. And so this is at level, uh, this is the category at which the patient is able to have new learning, uh, correct and modify their action or behavior with assistance. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go through levels one through eight. Uh, nine and 10 are pretty similar to eight. I'll leave that up to you guys to study on your own, okay? All right, so going back to the levels, let's put some more details to these levels. Level one, no response, total assist. They will appear asleep, like Stella, okay? So no response to sound, hearing, touch, pain, uh, nothing, okay? Level two is where we have generalized response at total assist. So what might you expect? They may have a gross reflex motor response to pain, but their response will pretty much be the same regardless of the type and location of the stimulus. It's not until you get to level three where you will have a localized response at total assistance. So localized response, uh, they may turn to or away from painful or auditory stimulation. Uh, they may blink when light passes through their visual field, they might even be able to follow and track moving object. Um, so they are responding directly to the stimulus, localized response at level three. So levels one to three, total assistance. And uh, this is when they are having pretty low cognitive and physical functioning. Now we get to level Four. four through six is where the patients are confused. So four is confused and agitated, requiring maximum assistance. So for level four, what I like to do is put myself in the situation. You're alert and in a heightened state. Um, you don't know where you are or why you're there. You're confused. You don't really know what time it is. You don't recognize the people coming in and out, offering you help. How would you feel? I would feel agitated. So what might you expect at this level? You may see the patient trying to crawl out of bed, trying to remove or pull off their constraints. Uh, they may appear moody, aggressive with flight behavior. Uh, they may be happy one moment, upset the next. Uh, very little short attention. So treatment at this level? Mm probably difficult. They will be unable to, unable to cooperate with treatment planning at this level. All right, level five. They're confused, but at this level, they're no longer agitated, but inappropriate. So level five is confused, inappropriate, requiring maximum assistance. 
So inappropriate, what does that look like? You may see a patient wandering about, not really knowing where he or she's going, uh, with a vague intention of going home. Uh, what's another example of inappropriate? Inappropriate use of objects. So you give them a toothbrush, instead of brushing their teeth, they may try to brush their hair. Uh, so this is, uh, these are some of the examples of inappropriate behavior. Uh, at this level, the patient is able to perform highly familiar tasks with enough structure and cues provided. Moving on to level six, this is where the patient is confused but no longer inappropriate. So this level is confused and appropriate with moderate assistance. All right, so for patients at level six, level six I like to sort of think of it as um, with two points, and that is awareness and attention. So at level four and five, their attention was very brief, infrequent, and um, they weren't able to really attend for a long time. But by the time they get to level six, they can attend to a highly familiar task for up to 30 minutes. So this is a big change here. Also, there is a vague recognition and emerging awareness of the self and others. So again, this is different at level six, you have some sort of awareness. So that's level six, they're confused and appropriate, requiring moderate assistance. All right, that was a lot, uh, but I hope this is sort of helping you guys break down the information. Okay, level seven, this is an important one. This is automatic and appropriate and they require minimal assistance. The reason why seven is so big is because new learning occurs here with minimal supervision. And so at level seven, they have attention, they can attend to a familiar task for 30 minutes and they can, um, they can monitor accuracy and modify tasks with minimal assistance. The only thing here is that they may be unrealistic in planning for their future. They're not really aware of how other people feel uh, and they may not really be aware of appropriate social um, behavior. Uh, so level seven is a big one. I think the big one to remember here is that there is new learning with carryover that happens. Finally, we're at level eight. This is purposeful and appropriate, and this only requires standby assistance. So patients at this level, they're able to attend to and complete a task for up to an hour in even a distracting environment. And so um, pretty independent, and this is where they can use assistive de memory devices like to-do lists to help them remember and perform independently. So there you have it, levels one through eight um, on the Rancho levels of cognitive functioning. I hope this helped you. Um, good luck studying, and uh, that's it. All right, until next time, bye.